Hello and welcome to the FDNY Refrigerating System Operating Engineer Practical Exam Tutorial Video. This new exam system is a major update to the certification test process for operating engineers. This new certification exam is very different from the old exam. It contains 3D representations of actual refrigeration systems. It does not include actual images of actual components. Successful candidates should become extremely familiar with these 3D representations of components. During our pilot studies we have found that people who did not watch this video carefully found it difficult to find components on the model. For this reason, please watch this video multiple times and memorize the information found in the component legend. When you arrive at FDNY headquarters to take the new exam, you will be given the opportunity to take the same tutorial exam shown in this tutorial video. Take advantage of that opportunity to do so. This new exam puts a strong emphasis on knowing an entire chiller system, especially where individual components are located on a real chiller system. Status will not be displayed on the chiller control panels. You will need to select individual components in order to view component status. Without further delay, let's begin. Questions on the exam are divided into six categories. Those categories are operations, validation of repairs or maintenance, troubleshooting, refrigerant handling, multi-step questions, and scenario questions. The layout of this exam includes four parts. The left side of the screen is known as the navigation bar. The images along the bottom of the screen are known as your toolbox. The area in the middle of the screen is a 3D model of a chiller system. The pop-up on the right side of the screen is where the questions for the exam are located. The time remaining on the exam is shown at the top of the list of questions. The questions pop-up can be moved by clicking here and dragging the pop-up left and right or up and down. We will start by describing the buttons on the navigation bar. If you click condenser pump 1 on the navigation bar it will zoom in on that object in the 3D model. The same is true if you click on the other condenser pump buttons as well. Notice that the larger objects in the model have numbers on them. These numbers are very important because they will help you answer questions on the exam. Let's take a look at the hide function. If we select condenser pump 1 and then select the strainer on condenser pump 1, watch what happens when we click the hide button. It goes away. Clicking the show all button shows the strainer again. This functionality is provided in order to allow you to trace out pipes and find smaller objects on the model. You will need to hide objects sometimes in order to identify a smaller component on the model as part of answering some questions. Sometimes it is easier to see an object on the model by rotating your view to one of the sides of the current object. Clicking the left button rotates your view to the left side of the object. Clicking the right button rotates your view to the right side. The same is true for back, top and bottom. Sometimes questions will instruct you to select an object and then select one of the sides of that object. Doing so is very important in order to help you properly answer questions on the exam in the correct order. On the topic of answering questions on the exam, it is very important that you do only what each question asks you to do and nothing more. Although in the real world you may often perform many more tasks in a process, this exam is only testing your knowledge of specific key elements of a process. Make sure to perform only the tasks that the question asks you to perform, in the order that the question specifies, and nothing more. Now let's look at the zoom function. There is a slider underneath the word zoom. To zoom in and out, select the slider with the mouse and then drag the slider right or left. You will need to use the zoom function to see smaller objects on the model. Before zooming in on the object, 
Please use the pan buttons to place that object in the center of your screen. This point here is where the center point of your screen is located. Positioning an object at the center point of the screen first and then zooming in next will allow you to see objects and labels easier. If you zoom in first it makes it more difficult to position an object in the center of the screen. If you are having an issue positioning an object in the middle of the screen, always zoom out and make sure it is centered first. Now let's talk about the submit button. This button is the most important button on the navigation bar. This button allows you to add the selected object on the model to your list of answers for the currently selected question. Let's select the first question on the right side of the screen to demonstrate how the process of submitting answers works. Notice that there is an empty box that appears below the question. This first question asks you to select condenser pump 1 from the navigation bar and then it asks you to identify the condenser pump 1 motor and pump assembly. Watch what happens when we select the motor and pump assembly on condenser pump 1 and click submit. It adds that object to the list of answers for the currently selected question. This is how you identify a part and submit it as an answer. Without clicking the submit button, your answer will not be added to the list of answers on the right. Let's position the control panel knife switch for condenser pump 1 in the center of the screen and then zoom in on it. Notice that at the bottom of the knife switch on the control panel for condenser pump 1 that there is a lockout tagout hoop. This lockout tagout hoop is present on every knife switch. This hoop is what you select in order to connect or disconnect a lockout tagout. Notice that the knife switch handle is not present. This is on purpose. The 3D model you are viewing is a static 3D model. For this reason, we do not want to represent any switch mechanism on the model as being in any specific position. It is for the same reason that there is no white indicator line on any hand-off auto selector switches as well. Notice that all quarter turn valves have round handles instead of lever handles for the same reason. We do not want to represent any object on the model as currently being in any specific state. Let's talk about how to handle accidental submissions of an answer. Sometimes you may click on an object in the model and submit it as your answer accidentally. For example, what if you submit a wrong answer or we submit the same answer twice and we want to remove the incorrect or duplicate answers? What do you do when this happens? Simply select the answer that you would like to remove from the list of answers and click the remove button. Double clicking the answer that you want to remove will also remove it from your list of answers as well. Although the answer is submitted and is shown in the box below the question, the system does not record your answer to a question until you click question completed. In other words, you will not receive credit for the answers to a question until you have clicked the question completed button for that question. When you click the question completed button you will see a prompt on the screen. This prompt is your last chance to change answers for this question. You will not be able to go back and change the answers to that question after clicking confirm. For this reason we suggest that you pay careful attention to which object you are working with and what actions the question is requesting that you perform. Once you click the confirm button your answers will be recorded for that question. You can tell which questions are completed by the color of the question. Completed questions are grayed out and the word, completed, is also shown at the end of the question. You will not receive credit for any questions that have not been completed so please ensure that all questions are grayed out when you reach the end of each section of the exam. After completing a question, be sure to select the next question in the list. This is how the system knows which question you are trying to submit answers to. Without seeing the list box below the question, your answers cannot be added to the list. 
Let's move on to the second question to explore more features of this exam. The second question asks you to identify the two manually operated butterfly valves that isolate condenser pump 1 from the system. At the end of this question, it states that this question set has one more follow-up question. It means this question is a problem set. You will see one follow-up question when you completed this first question. Please pay attention to the order that the exam asks you to click on the objects. As stated before, the order of your answers is very important. Your answers and the order of those answers is what the system relies on to grade your exam. When you click a butterfly valve and submit that object as an answer you will notice that action buttons appear above the question at the top. Some objects in the 3D model have actions associated with them. Those actions are always available to you during the process of performing a task, just as they are in the real world. Although the action buttons are present, it does not mean that they are part of the answer to the question. The action buttons are only needed in order to answer some questions. If the question only asks you to identify an object and does not ask you to perform any actions, you should not select any actions as part of your answer. Only submit the object as your answer. While this question does not ask you to perform any actions, pay attention to the area below the action buttons. This area is where all status information for every object on the exam is shown. Status is not shown on any of the control panels, this is the only area where you will find the status of a component. Status information that is shown here is always critical for answering follow-up questions so it is important to take note of status information when it is shown. One issue that can occur while taking your exam is what to do if your answers are the correct answers, but are in the wrong order. Simply select the answer that you would like to move and use the move up and move down buttons to change the order of your answers in the list. The follow-up questions are only shown after the previous question has been answered. Let's complete this question to see the follow-up for this question. The follow-up question asks you what was the status of the two valves. If you remember the status information from the previous question, you can answer it without verifying the status. However, if you forget or are not sure, you can reselect and resubmit the two objects on the model to view the status again. There is another way to view the status information. You can click the View Object Info button. That button is underneath the Submit button on the left. This button shows the object ID for the selected object and status information associated with that object for the current question. Sometimes you may want to use this button to review and compare the objects in the model to your list of answers on the right. Since this follow-up is a multiple choice question, you only need to select the correct answer in the list of answers and then complete the question. Let's talk about the images along the bottom of the screen. This is known as your toolbox. The third question asks you to select the appropriate tool from the toolbox that can be used to extinguish a small fire confined to a small area. Your toolbox has reference documents in it as well. If you place your mouse over a reference document it will tell you what it is. The same is true for the tools. You can scroll right and left to view each of the items in your toolbox. Selecting an item in the toolbox will submit that item to your list of answers automatically. Because it automatically adds the item to your list of answers, you do not need to click the submit button for any item in the toolbox. The fourth question asks you to find the safety data sheet for R22. Once you find the reference document and click on it, it will open as well as adding it to the list of answers. You can scroll up and down to look for the information you need. You can also zoom in and out to see information more clearly. If you are finished looking at a reference document, you can close it by clicking the X in the upper right hand corner of the pop-up window. Sometimes the question will directly ask you to select a certain reference document to answer the question, just as this one did. Sometimes questions will not inform you that you need to refer to a certain reference document when you will need to do so to answer the question. 
In such cases the exam is testing your knowledge of which document needs to be referenced in order to answer the question. The fifth question is a multi-step question. This question asks you to put condenser water pump 2 in service and take condenser water pump 1 out of service for repair. You may be tempted to start performing all these activities immediately. This is not necessary. The old exam worked this way, but the new exam does not work this way. It will walk you through each step. Only perform the specific action or list of actions that each individual question requests that you perform. The seven follow-up questions will take care of the rest. For example, this question only asks you to identify the gauge that directly displays the discharge pressure of condenser water pump 1. You should only find that gauge instead of doing all of the other actions that are related to starting up a pump and shutting down another pump. Let's proceed by finding the gauge that displays the discharge pressure of condenser water pump 1 and submit it as our answer. Notice that the status showed up on the right side. All status for gauges and control panels will be displayed here. The status information will only be shown when it is necessary. If you randomly click and submit some gauges which are not related to the question, you may not see any status being displayed. You must submit the correct gauge to obtain the correct status information. Let's complete this question which will show us the first follow-up question. The follow-up question is a multiple-choice question. It asks what the pressure was. Sometimes you will need to use the status that is displayed as well as looking at a reference document to calculate a correct answer. In this case, the status that was shown is the answer that we should select. Let's complete this question and move on to the next follow-up question. This question tells us the current status of condenser pump 2. That information is there to tell us what we need to do next. First we will remove the lockout tag out from the knife switch. Next we will turn the knife switch on. Next we will turn the selector switch from off to auto. Doing so will start up condenser pump 2. This is everything that is required to answer this specific question so let's complete the question. The next follow-up question asks us to look at the discharge pressure of condenser pump 2. Notice the status that showed up. This status shows that the pressure is the same pressure as condenser pump 1. Let's select that pressure in the list and complete this question. The next question asks a straightforward yes-no question. This is an example of when noting the status for previous answers becomes important. You will need to recall that information in order to answer this question properly. Let's complete this question and move on. This question requests that we turn off condenser water pump 1. This involves turning the hand off auto switch to off. Next we should turn off the knife switch. And finally we will attach a lockout tag out to the knife switch. Let's move on to the next follow up now. This last follow up question requests that we isolate condenser pump 1 from the system by closing the inlet and outlet valves. Remember to pay attention to the order that the question asks. Submitting answers in the wrong order will cause you to fail a question. Let's do that and complete the question. Notice how this question flowed. Look at each of the answers to each of the questions. There are other tasks that we could have performed in this process, but that is not the purpose of this exam. As stated previously, the purpose of this exam is to test your knowledge of where components are located and how to perform only specific tasks in a process. Since no more follow-up questions show up, this means this multi-step question is completed. Once all questions for the model have been answered, click All Questions Completed.
When you click the All Questions Completed button you will see a prompt on the screen. This prompt is your last chance to finish answering any questions that have not been completed yet. We did not complete our fourth question, so the prompt shows the total questions not completed is one. If you still have time left, you should go back and complete any questions that have not been completed before moving on. Once you complete the first part of the exam, the next part of the exam will be loaded with a new set of questions. Once all the questions are completed for the second portion of the exam, click the All Questions Completed button again. Doing so will take you to a screen, which provides you with two sets of instructions. The first instruction applies to when you have completed the tutorial exam. It instructs you to click the Start Exam button that appears here in the upper right hand corner. Doing so will launch the actual exam. The second instruction applies to when you have completed the actual exam. It instructs you to click a View Grade button that will appear here in the upper right hand corner. You will be able to view your score for the actual exam at that time. You will need 70% or better to pass the exam. This concludes the first part of this tutorial video for demonstrating how to take this exam. The second part of this tutorial video is to help you identify parts on the model using the components legend. As stated previously, it is critical that you memorize the information in this document. Since the new exam does not show real pictures of real objects this document is your only resource for discerning between types of objects on the 3D model. The color legend should also act as a key resource as well. The first picture in the component legend is what a flow switch looks like in the 3D model. The second picture in the component legend is a temperature sensor. The third picture is two components. The light blue portion is a service valve. The dark blue portion is a pressure transducer connected to a service valve. The fourth picture is two pressure relief valves connected to brown external vent piping. The fifth picture in the component legend is a thermometer. The sixth picture in the component legend is a pressure gauge. A quarter turn valve is below the gauge. The seventh picture in the component legend is a quarter turn valve. The eighth picture in the component legend is a disconnect switch. Below the switch, there is a lockout tag out attachment hoop. The ninth picture in the component legend is a hand, off, auto selector switch. The tenth picture is a bulb temperature sensor. The eleventh is front and side views of a solenoid valve. The twelfth picture is an automatic valve. The thirteenth picture is a service valve. The fourteenth picture is a king valve. The fifteenth picture shows the two different types of strainers. The sixteenth picture is a glass tube sight glass. The seventeenth picture is a round window sight glass. The eighteenth picture includes high and low nut shaped window sight glasses. The nineteenth picture shows high and low level floats. The twentieth picture shows a steam trap and two unions. You should study these components and memorize their shapes and colors prior to taking your exam. While the color coding of components is helpful while taking the exam, they are designed only to help in identifying components. The next part of the component legend identifies the colors of different types of components in the 3D model. For your convenience, we color code different components and pipes by categories or functions to make it easier to identify components during the exam. Dark blue represents electronic valves and electronic components. Light blue represents evaporator and cold water components and piping. Dark brown represents contaminant filtration, venting and drain components. Tan represents condenser components and piping. Red represents surface condenser components and piping. Black represents non-electronic valves. Gray represents gauges and oil components and piping. Orange represents turbine components and piping. Green represents compressor components and piping. Thank you for taking your time to watch this tutorial video. It is designed specifically to help you prepare for the new exam. 
If you have any questions or some functionality is unclear please view this video again.